Let me now call on Neil's first daughter, Lisa, who will speak a bit about the author, her father. Lisa is a graduate of the University of the West Indies with a degree in accounting. She also holds an international MBA with distinction from the Arthur Lockjack International School of Business. She is currently the marketing manager Trinidad for Digicel, a position to which she was recently promoted. Ladies and gentlemen, my niece, Miss Lisa Giuseppe. <laughs> Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good evening. So I've been given the very difficult task tonight. I've been asked to speak about the author Neil Giuseppe, and I've been asked to do it in five to seven minutes. But how does one speak about the sheer volume of his accomplishments in such a short time? I, however, have never been one to back down from a challenge, so here we go. Neil Giuseppe was born in Trinidad and Tobago on August 24, 1948, to Neville and Undine Giuseppe. Educated at Arima's Boy, Arima Boys Government School, St. Mary's College, and the University of the West Indies, Mona, Jamaica, he spent a considerable portion of his working life in the media in Trinidad and Tobago. Starting with our beloved TTT, where he served in the position of Head of News and Current Affairs for seven years and as one of the country's foremost newscasters. He then spent seven year, sorry, eight years as Public Relations Manager of the Trinidad and Tobago Telephone Company. He returned to the media in 1990 at the Trinidad Broadcasting Company, where he served as Managing Director for a number of years. During his stint at Trinidad Broadcasting, he also served for three years as a Vice President of the Caribbean Broadcasting Union. In 1994, he set up his own company, Communication Specialist Limited, a public relations and media consultancy firm, which he operated successfully until his retirement in December 2007. He is happily married to Carol Giuseppe, née Lucis, and they have chosen to spend their retirement years in Arima, the borough in which they were both born and both loved dearly. He is the proud father of two daughters. <laughs> His firstborn, Lisa Giselle, a talented, intelligent, witty, and amazingly good-looking specimen of a human being. <laughs> And the other is Nicole Marie. <laughs> okay, I'm joking, Nicole. You're almost as good looking as I am. A known golf fanatic, he has traveled around the world playing the sport and spending our inheritance and served as the managing director, manager of the Trinidad and Tobago team to the Caribbean Amateur Championships on three occasions. In 2013, he published his autobiography, No Regrets, which he has now followed up with the sequel, The Journey Continues, thus fulfilling his burning desire to leave a tangible legacy for his wife and his two daughters. So now I'm done talking about Neil Giuseppe, the man. I want to talk about Neil Giuseppe, the father. And Daddy, before I start, I want to remind you, you asked me to do this, right? <laughs> and I love you very much, okay? <laughs> they always say that you should raise your daughters to be respectful ladies. But my father won. He raised respectful ladies that don't take crap from anyone. He taught us to speak out and let our voices be heard. But the biggest influence that my father has had on us is that he believed in us. And he made us believe in us. That we could do anything we set our minds to. He's always there with a listening ear and great advice when something is happening at work and I need someone to talk to. He was there for me when I decided that I wanted to start Bella Bachi, my own online women's clothing store. Yes, that was a shameless plug. So much so that he and Carol would visit every one of the many pop-up shops that I was participating in. And in some cases, when he realized I was overwhelmed, they would both jump in with Carol helping to sell clothing and Daddy taking payments. 
Now, I'm sure that selling female clothing was not what he envisioned as a typical Saturday evening in his twilight years. But that is what he did because he believed in me and he always wanted to see us succeed. He also taught us many valuable lessons. When I was about to turn 21 years old, I asked my father for a car. I explained to him all the reasons why I should have a car, including the fact that, I mean, obviously, a young lady my age, it was very unsafe to, for me to be traveling. And daddy fully agreed. So by the end of the conversation, I was like, yes, I have this one in the bag. So on the day of my birthday, my father came over with this very solemn look. He said, Lisa, my love, I know this is something that you've been asking me for a while, and while it, whilst it was quite costly, I decided that it was something that you deserved to have, and I wanted you to have it. And then handed me a small box. So of course, at this point, my heart is racing, my palms are sweating, and I knew this was the moment. I ripped open the wrapping, opened the box, and I looked inside. You all want to know what was in there? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'll tell you, it was a toy car. <laughs> Shock and disbelief at this point set in. And it took me a few moments to register that I was hearing snickering coming from my father. <laughs> and when I looked up, it was all he could do to hold himself together. So for those of you who don't know, my father is quite the prankster. <clears throat> so he said to me, what? I thought you wanted a car. I, I actually don't think I spoke to him for about two weeks. I was so angry. <laughs> But even in that moment, he taught me another lesson. Work hard for what you want. Do not expect anything without hard work. Nothing worth having in life comes easily. So I'd like to actually read an excerpt from the book Go Set a Watchman by Harper Lee. She did not stand alone, but what stood behind her, the most potent moral force in her life was the love of her father. She never questioned it never thought about it, never even realized that before she made any decision of importance, the reflex, what would Atticus do, passed through her subconscious. She never realized what made her dig her feet in and stand firm whenever she did that was her father, that whatever decent and of good report in her character was put there by her father. She did not know that she worshipped him. Reminiscing on things tonight, something dawned on me that was funny. When I was younger, people always used to tell me, when I look at you, I see your father. And I used to get quietly upset because, I mean... <laughs> However, as I got older, it dawned on me that there's actually no bigger compliment that someone could pay me. Because I realized that when I am at my best, I am my father's daughter. I love you, Daddy.